Good morning, good morning, and God bless you. We are so excited to have you here with us this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I want to encourage you to jump up on your feet, to clap your hands, to lift your voices, to wave your hands, to rejoice and to be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm grateful on this morning for our opportunity to gather in this blessed space together and lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Give God praise. He's worthy. From the rising of the sun unto the setting of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. Come on. Lift him up. Hallelujah. 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 We're so glad to have you this morning. So excited that you would join with us in worship. We're going to ask you right now uh, to share this with somebody. Let somebody know what God is doing. Uh, uh, Share it. uh, Connect somebody else with this worship experience. It's our duty as ambassadors for Christ. We're going to begin our worship experience. And right now, we're going to go to Sister Crystal as she leads us to the throne of grace. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Crystal. If you could stand up on your feet on this morning and give the Lord a hand clap of praise Hallelujah. for he is good and he is yes, worthy he is. to be praised yes, our savior is. our all in all our everything the Hallelujah. great i am he is worthy Hallelujah. to be lifted Hallelujah. up he is worthy to be exalted he Hallelujah. is worthy to be magnified yes, yes. here on this earth when i think of the goodness of jesus and all that he has done for me my soul cries out hallelujah i thank god for saving me I thank god we're going to read from john chapter 15 hallelujah starting at verse 5 john chapter 15 starting at verse 5 yes i am the vine you are the branches those yes, who yes, remain yes. in me and I in, th- in them will produce much fruit. Hallelujah. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Hallelujah. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless you, branch and withers. Such Thank branches you, are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my remain, words remain, remain in you, remain. you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted when you produce much fruit you are my true disciples this brings great glory to my father I have loved you even as the father has loved me remain in my love when you obey my commandments you remain in my love just as I obey my father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day, God. We thank you, Lord, for putting breath within our bodies, dear God, on today just to praise your name, just to magnify you, God, just to lift you up, God, because you are our good, good father and you care for us, God. So we thank you for caring for us on today, Lord, for loving us on today, God, for your grace and your mercy, Lord, that is new every morning unto us. We thank you for it, God. We thank you for it. God. We thank you for it, God, for your unfailing love, for your kindness, God, for your tender mercies, God, for working miracles within our lives, dear God, for keeping your word to us, God, for keeping your promises to us, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you on today, God. We thank you for another at-home worship experience, dear Heavenly Father, where we can surrender our all to you, dear Heavenly Father, that we have ears open to hear, God, and to do your word, dear God. We thank
thank you for your word that transforms us, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for it on today, God. We thank you that we are chosen, God, on today. We are chosen for completion, God. You have called us by name, God. We thank you for being your sons and daughters on today. Your children, dear God. Your heirs on this earth. Your representation, God. Your light, dear Heavenly Father. The salt of the earth, dear God. Where we can test and cry of your goodness, God. Of your miracle you, working power, God. We thank you, Lord, for Hallelujah. being the light that shines Hallelujah. within the darkness, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for being sovereign, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank yes, you, Lord, for yes, being Lord. sovereign yes. in our lives. Yes, there is yes, nothing Lord. that you cannot do, God. We thank you, God. Our confidence is in you, Lord. Our we hope is in you, Lord. Our strength is in you, dear Heavenly you. Father. You are our solid rock, dear Heavenly Father, and we hold on to you. Dear God, and we chase after you, dear Heavenly Father. And I thank you, God, that you draw nearer to us on today, God. You draw nearer to every viewer that is viewing this worship experience on today, God. You are drawing nearer to them, God, because they are drawing nearer to you, God. They are surrendering their all to you, God. They are bowing down at your feet, God. They've tried it their way, dear Heavenly Father. And our way that cannot work, dear God. Only your way works, God. Only thank your you, way is perfect, God. So thank I you, thank Lord. you, God. I thank you, God, that we Lord turn God, it over all you. to you, God. We thank turn you, it over God. to you, God. Have we turn it over to you, God. We turn it over to you, God. And I thank you, dear Lord, that you are working everything out for our good, dear God. No matter how it comes in our lives, dear Heavenly Father. No matter how it comes towards us, dear Heavenly Father. Everything that passes through your hands, God, it is worked out for the good, God. Everything was created for and by you, dear Heavenly Father. So I thank you, dear God. I thank you for it on today, God, that Jesus Christ's name is Hallelujah. bigger, it's greater, it's, be, it's, yeah, it's to be bigger. exalted. It's, it's, it's over every come circumstance. Come it's over every come hardship. Up. It's over every sickness. Over every diagnosis. Over every broken place, God. Your name, God, is greater, dear God. Your name is to be exalted. Lift him up. Your He's name greater. is to be lifted up, Hallelujah. God. And Hallelujah. we lift you up for today, God. We you and up. we magnify we lift you up. We today, God. You up. And we give Hallelujah. you our highest hallelujah, Hallelujah. God. We give you our thank highest you, praise, you, God. We give thank you our you, worship on today, Hallelujah. We God, are the worship, you. Hallelujah. God. And you hear yes, us, God. Lord. Yes, Lord. That is yes. what your word says. Hallelujah. So we thank you Lift for hearing up. us Lift on up. today, Lift God. Up. We thank you for seeing Hallelujah. us, God. And we thank you, God, for being faithful God to answer us. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your love. 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 Move by your spirit in this place, dear God. Rain down your anointing on this place, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Let people know today that they are worshiping God. There is nothing that they have done within their lives, dear God, that you that you will remove your love or remove yourself from you, dear God. Let them know that they are forgiven on today, God. That that they are your masterpiece on today. That they are your worship, dear God. That you have called them. You, God. I thank you, Lord, for our perfect destiny being great in you, God. I thank you for this. I thank you for Jesus Christ. Sacrifice on today, God. So we could be standing here, God. So we could be praising your name, dear God. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. We are more than conquerors, God. We are more than conquerors. God. We are just surviving, God, but we are more than conquerors, God. And I come thank on, you for it, God. I thank I'm you for overwhelming victory on today, God. I thank you for it, God. I thank, thank you for it, God. If I had 10,000 tons more, I could have Hallelujah. praised you or thank you enough, God, for everything that you are to me, God, and everything that you have done, God. I will not let the rock cry out for me, God. I will praise you. I will let you. I will see you. I will let the world know about you, Lord. Use us, God, for your glory, God. For your glory, God. Get glory. Get glory. Get glory. Get glory. Let us God. And more of you, More of you, More of you, Lord. Take over, God. Take over, God. Take over. Do all of what you do, God. You are great and greatly to be praised. So we Hallelujah. love you on today, God. 
We thank you for being within every worship song that will be sung. Every word that is spoken by our pastor, God, to edify you, God, to glorify you, God, to lift you up, God. We thank you for the chains that will be broken on today, God. The lives that will come back to you, God. The lives that will be saved, God. We count it as done, God, in your name, dear God. Do the drawing. Do the drawing, God. Do the drawing, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for what you are doing within this time, Lord, within this season. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for joy, for peace, dear God, everlasting, dear Heavenly Father. We love you on today, Lord. We praise you on today. We honor you Hallelujah! What a privilege, Lord, to be called your children. Hallelujah! I thank you, God. I thank you, God. We thank you, God. We praise you, God. We magnify you, God. Now let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable bless the Lord. Bless the in Lord. your bless sight. The Lord. Oh Lord, the Lord, our strength and Hallelujah. our redeemer. Let everyone say, Amen. Hallelujah. Turning it back Hallelujah. over to you, Pastor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, help us worship. Come on, help us worship right now. Come on, come on, give God praise right now where you are. Sister Crystal said it. If, if you abide in me, come on, and my word abides in you. If you remain in me, come on, somebody, and my word remains in you, then you can ask what you will of the Savior. Come on, I dare you to believe it this morning. Somebody got to ask down in the city of their soul. I dare you to ask right now yeah. when you pray come on somebody pray believing yeah. and you shall receive it and you shall have it come on stand right now yeah. on the authority of the word of God on the promise of the word of God the word that declares nothing is impossible to them that believe it come on nothing is impossible if you believe it I dare you to jump up on your feet right now and give our God the praise come on testify to yourself and holler nothing is impossible hallelujah 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 Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, C4C and family. Welcome to At Home Worship. I'm inviting you to go ahead and stand upon your feet and let's give God some reverence on this morning and how we're going to sing about how nothing is impossible with God because we serve a God that sits high and looks low and he is the king over all the earth, over the heavens and the earth, the Bible says. So come on, stand with me and let's go ahead and give God praise. Amen.
struggles are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. to yourself and say nothing is impossible come on nothing is impossible nothing is impossible nothing 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 I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight come on if God said it I believe it come on I dare you to encourage yourself right now if God said it I believe it I believe it I believe it greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world I believe it Come on, somebody say nothing is impossible. Every promise in the book is mine. Come on, every promise in the book is mine. Every promise in the book is mine. Hallelujah. 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 I encourage you to stand on that word this morning. Nothing is impossible. Situations may seem bleak. Difficulties and calamities in life may weigh you down, but... Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. It is you who gives me strength and nothing. Nothing is impossible. Somebody out there, you, you, you know what I mean. You, you understand exactly what I'm saying. You throw in the towel on yourself. You thought it was over. You'd given in. You'd given up. Until the grace of God breathed new life into you, new hope into you, new strength into you, and you realized firsthand that if God started it, <laughs> he's God enough to finish it. Hallelujah. Stay in worship wherever you are. Lift up the name of Jesus. He's bigger.
than whatever you're facing right now. I decree and declare it in the name of he who liveth forever that he's greater. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater. And I, I encourage you and I invite you this morning to partner your faith with the word of the living God until the manifestation of his glory is seen in your life. I encourage you to do it right now in the name of Jesus. That you would partner your faith with this moment and believe that nothing is impossible. Come on, just say it right where you are. I believe. Come on. Come on, say it one more time. I believe. Come on, speak prophetically into your own life and declare, I've got the victory. I know you may not feel like you got it and it might not look like you got it. But I dare you, I dare you, I dare you to speak prophetically to yourself right now and declare, I've got the victory. I win because God said so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, keep on worshiping wherever you are. We're going to move on with service and we're going to invite Sis J right now to, to share with us our morning announcements. God bless you. Good morning, Sis J. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining C4C Live. On behalf of Pastor Nate and the Chosen for Completion family, we welcome our e-church members and we are so glad you have joined us today. Here at C4C, we have three missions. They are seeking the lost, strengthening the body, and showing love to all. You can join us here every Sunday for C4C Live at 1130 a.m., for our at-home worship service or come visit us in person at 39 Afton Parkway, Portsmouth, Virginia every Sunday for our normally scheduled 11 a.m. service. Prayer is the key and so we challenge you to get plugged into the power of prayer by joining us every Monday through Thursday at 6.30 a.m. or also on Friday at 5 a.m. for our morning prayer. This is just the right time to set the tone for your day with prayer and devotion. Every Wednesday during this closure season, we will have our master's class via Zoom. Please see Sister Sam for your assignments and remember to invite others and encourage them to stay connected to God's word. We have a few upcoming events and chosen reminders for you. We want to make sure we stay connected, so C4C is requesting that all members complete an updated membership form. As we're moving forward and preparing for a potential reopening, we want to make sure we have all updated information. So please check Facebook, Messenger, or our newsletter for your membership link. The sudden loss of jobs, wages, and child care has created an unprecedented economic crisis, especially for the most vulnerable in our community who were already struggling when the pandemic struck. It is our responsibility to help those individuals, except especially those who won't be getting support from anywhere else. And Chosen to Care is here to help. So please make sure you contact the church office for a list of community partners and support that is available. We are continuing our annual back to school supply collection. So whether our students are learning in person or virtually, we want to make sure they have all the things they need in order to succeed. Please continue collecting these items and we, we will provide additional information for distribution and drop off. Calling all chosen women and friends. Can I hear you say, ooh wee? That's right, mark your calendar for Saturday. October 24th at 1130 a.m. for a Chosen Women virtual lunch and learn event. Yes, that's right. We are getting financially FIT, financially fit. So please invite your family members, invite your friends, and don't you forget to tell your sister girls to come on out and get blessed with ways to become to be financially falling into treasure. So can't wait to see you there in the meeting room on Saturday, October 24th at 11.30 a.m. Faith cometh by hearing. So remember to revisit past teaching series on Facebook Live or our Chosen for Completion YouTube channels. By doing so, you will help your faith to grow. Please be sure to like or subscribe to our Facebook page and YouTube channels. Our goal is to extend our reach, so make sure you share these outlets with everyone you know. Do we have any first-time visitors to C4C Live? 
If so, please inbox us with your name and contact information. We have first responders on standby and they are ready to help keep you abreast of all the things that are happening here at C4C. We certainly are glad that you chose to join our e-church today. And we have a great list of birthday celebrations. First, we want to make sure we have a birthday shout out to Lauren Barnes. We are so excited for you. Happy birthday. Kiana Gear, happy birthday, Kiana. Vita Green, happy birthday, Vita. Crystal Stanley, happy birthday, Evangelist in Training Crystal. And Xavier Stanley, CG, happy birthday, Xavier. We love you all. We appreciate you all. And we thank God for you all. So let me start with Lauren. Lauren, you are such a delightful person. I guess I can say all of our folks are delightful. Um, but we love your smile. We love your attitude. You um, are so positive. You are uplifting. You are encouraging. Um, we are absolutely proud of the amazing things God is doing in your life. Um, and you and Jalen, we love you both. We hope you celebrated your happy birthday in style. We know that you are across the miles and you are in a different state, but our love travels. And so we thank you for being a part of our C4C family and your C4C family is sending you happy birthday wishes. Sis Kiana Greer, you are the new Mrs. Kiana Greer. We are so happy to celebrate your um, new um, endeavor and covenant. We are um, just happy for you. You worship with me on um, the dance ministry, Chosen to Worship. You have such a loving spirit. You also are on Chosen to Praise team. So we know that you worship God with your heart. You have um, a dedication for our ministry and we appreciate um, that about you. You are always willing to lend a helping hand, um, you and the family. And so we thank you for your work in our ministry. Sis Vita Green, we want to send you happy birthday. Sis Vita is our author. She is, um, she's such a quiet spirit, but don't let her fool you because she has a powerful, powerful ministry inside of her. Um, she is always ready to encourage. She has a great love for our children. She's an educator. She's a mom. She takes all of those titles absolutely seriously. Um, and because she likes to write, she's also a contributing person to our C4C weekly newsletter that you all may be getting. And so we appreciate you, Sis Evita. We know that you celebrated in style because it was your birthday. Um, and so we are so wishing you um, wonderful birthday and many, many blessings. Evangelist Crystal, Evangelist in Training Crystal Stanley. Now, you all know her because when we opened up Chosen to um, Worship at Home um, on Sundays at Home Worship, you know that Evangelist Crystal Stanley is the one in which she is bringing that fire as we open up our C4C Live. Um, but Evangelist Crystal, what can I say? We meet you every morning on the prayer line. You always have encouraging words for us. You can pray. And sometimes I think we, you praying for 30 minutes without breathing. We don't understand how you do that. But you, um, you just light up the prayer line. You've been an inspiration to all of us. I can honestly say that by your powerful stance that you take in prayer, you fight your battles. And we've seen you fight your battles. Um, we know that you have prayed for continued health for everyone else, and we know that you've continued to pray long life to you. And so we know that God is blessing you. We know that God is hearing and answering your prayer. He's restoring life to you and every cell in your body for all that you've given to us in the ministry and as worship unto God, unto our Father. And so we love you, Evangelist and Training Crystal Stanley. May God bless you with long, long life. Uh, and our Xavier Stanley, can I get a CG shout out? Um, we just want to say happy birthday. You turned 11 years old. You got some good gifts for your birthday. We love you, Xavier. You are um, such a basketball superstar. Now, you put me to shame because you can shout out all the jersey numbers, all of the stats. Um, I've seen you in action. 
Um, you have an awesome minute, uh, awesome memory, um, but you are in smart and intelligent. We know those angels are charged over you and keeping you in all your ways. We're going to see wonderful things from you, Xavier Stanley. We hope you enjoyed your birthday and your celebration. So are you all ready? Let's sing happy birthday to all of our C4C um, members. Let's go. It's Lauren, it's Kiana, it's Vita, it's Crystal, and it's Xavier. Are y'all ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lauren, Kiana, Vita, Crystal, and Xavier. Happy birthday to you. At this time, we want to make sure we show a little love. Let's take a moment, give an air hug, an elbow bump. Or even you better go on over there and post this link to YouTube and Facebook telling your friends to come on over here and join us because that's how we share the love of Christ. So make sure you are encouraged to make your faith bigger than your fears because not only were you chosen to start, you're definitely going to endure and you are chosen for completion. God bless you. Now let's join Pastor Nate and our anointed service already in progress. Hallelujah. You are chosen for completion. Thank you so much, Sis J, for all of our morning announcements. And happy, happy, happy birthday uh, to all of our uh, individuals who had birthdays, who celebrated this past week. We thank God for you. Uh, we appreciate you. We love you from the absolute bottom of our hearts. And we thank God for the great honor and the privilege of building the kingdom alongside of you. Uh, I'm grateful for the love that exists here at Chosen for Completion Ministries. I'm grateful uh, for the fact that we're, we're a body of Christ that likes to, loves to fellowship, loves to be around one another, loves to share and, and actually do life together. Amen. We, we, we love to do life together. And and because we've been away from one another so long, uh, you, you, you feel like I feel, I'm assuming you, you, you feel the, the absence of your brothers in Christ and your sisters in Christ, uh, just not being able to hug them, not being able to, to, to look into their faces and to smile and to laugh together, uh, not being able to be in the same place together, lifting up the name of Jesus, I understand this is a difficult season and a different season. And uh, some of us may feel, we may feel isolated in those spaces. Uh, and, and it's difficult at times uh, to continue to endure unfamiliar situations for extreme amounts of time. And I'm certain that no one saw us being in the position that we're in for this long. But I've got good news for you. I've got good news for you. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the service is Rep Your City. We still want you to Rep Your City today. We still want you to let us know where you're watching from, uh, to let us know so that we can partner with you in prayer, so that we can continue to lift you up and lift up your city. But this is one of my favorite parts because not only do we get to Rep Our City, uh, but for everyone who feels isolated in those difficult spaces, this is a time that we can introduce you to C4C faces. Hello, C4C. I am Kenyana. DeAndre. DeAndre. And we're just coming to give you greetings from us. Um, during this pandemic, it has been a little challenging not being able to see our families like we are used to doing, but we are doing well. Um, Donovan and DeAndre have both become a year older. Um, I've lost weight, gone into business. Donovan has a job now, and they are doing well. Uh, we miss you guys. We miss the hugs and the love. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye. Take care. Good morning. My name is Daryl. Some call me DJ, and I'm a member of Chosen for Completion Ministry. We have an amazing church, an amazing leader, Pastor Nate Griffin. Thank you so much for your leadership. And some of the things that I'm doing during this pandemic, you see that I'm a little out of breath. I had to slow it down so I could make this video, is that I'm on the trail. I have several trails that I'm, all of them are my favorite. But I also, while seeking the lost, strength in the body 
and she wanted up to all I'm on my trail and I also post my stats at the end and which has encouraged so many people I get messages back that they have started working out and that they are also incorporating teams that walk together and they master their fitness challenges together that's what we need to do it's the body of Christ I miss my church family I want you to know why I'm on this trail I'm praying for you as you pray for me and I cannot wait to get back and to 39 Afton Parkway which is our church home love you have a great day good morning C4C this is Deacon Tyler once again here to do the morning offering I want to thank everybody for everything you guys have been doing I love seeing my C4C family before I come on you guys have been doing an awesome job and I can't wait to see everybody face to face happy birthday sister Crystal you know you've been rocking girl happy birthday I love the way you pray all right, now this offering time, y'all. It's time frame where everybody can participate. All right, now of course there's two ways you can give. One is through Giveify, or three clicks on your phone, and money comes straight over to the, uh, to the church. Or you can send a check or money order to the church. That's 39 Afton Parkway, Portland, Virginia, 23702. All right, and you'll address it to Chosen for Completion or C4C, whichever one you want to do. All right. And we thank you right now for everything. Sister Dina, we want to say um, thank you for your service. Thank you for all the 23 years you, you've been given to the, to the United States. And we thank you everything. All right, so let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, we thank you right now for the offering that we're about to receive. Lord, let it be used to enhance our kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Back to you, Pastor. Go vote. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Deacon Todd, uh, for, for accepting our offering once more. Uh, if you want to sow, if you want to give, your gifts empower us to continue to do what we're doing here at C4C. Uh, from our care closet to our COVID-19 relief fund, we're able to continue being the hands and feet of Jesus because of the seed that you sow. So I encourage you to continue to do that uh, as the Lord ministers to your heart and connects with you and, and promptly you to share that you would open up your heart and continue to sow in Jesus name uh, again if you want to send a seed uh, to the actual building 39 Afton Parkway Portsmouth Virginia chosen for completion or C4C or you can give via Givelify three easy steps and it's 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 that simple uh, I just want to piggyback one more thing Deacon Todd said it I want to reiterate it sis Dina at celebrated 23 years of service and the United States Navy this past week and we just want to thank you once more for your service for everything that you give for every sacrifice you've made we give God glory for you and we love you we are so honored so honored to call you a sister in Christ uh, we're grateful for you uh, so God bless you God keep you God continue to sustain you God continue to uplift you and everything that you do in Jesus name listen if you would please come and join us once more as we go into our worship we believe we believe that our God is able to manifest his will on earth as it is in heaven that he's able to shift atmospheres that he's able to demonstrate his glory that he's able to surround us with his love. If you believe that and you're willing to receive that on today, just stand up on your feet and join us in this moment as we worship the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords here as in heaven. Hallelujah. Great morning, C4C and family. I think it's very important that we allow God to come into the room here with us. So I ask that you repeat after me as soon as you catch on because it's important that we allow God to come into this place. So follow me and say, Come on in, God. You're welcome here. Come on in, God. You're welcome here. Say that. Come on in, God. You're welcome. You're welcome here. Yes. Come on in. Yeah. 
the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. One more time I say, the atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. I ask you, God. Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love Cause your love surrounds us You're the reason we came To encounter your love Your love surrounds us Yeah. 
You're welcome here. 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 You
presence. We glory in your presence. Everything is changed in your presence. Everything is transformed there. We desire to be in your presence. demonstrating yourself in this moment for revealing yourself to us in this moment we pray that you would continue to speak to our hearts hallelujah in the name of Jesus come Holy Spirit oh come abide within us and deference to the God who stood up for us as we go into the word of the living God. The flower fades, the grass withers, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. I would that you would stand for the God who stood up for you. And turn with me in your Bibles to the fifth chapter of the book of Mark. Hallelujah. The fifth chapter of the book of Mark. That is the position of our text on this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Let it breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of the Lord now breathe on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fifth chapter of the book of Mark, if you would join me there. Hallelujah. I just can't give up now. Somebody go back with me. I've come too far from where I started. Started from nobody told me that the road would be easy. Oh, but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I don't believe that he brought me this far. Said I don't believe that he brought me this far. I don't believe that he brought me this far. Hallelujah. And the gospel reads as such. And they came over unto the other side. Somebody say the other side. They came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit whom had his dwelling amongst the tombs and none could bind him. No, not with chains 
because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him and always night and day, night and day, day and night, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus, but when he saw Jesus, but when he saw a terrible situation, a dire circumstance, the worst possible predicament to be in. But when he saw Jesus, I want to speak to you this morning uh, from a subject title, The Story is Why I Stayed. The Story is Why I Stayed. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, thank you for your presence in this place. Holy, 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 holy art thou, Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with your glory. We come before you on this morning thanking you for being everything that you are. The lily and the valley, the bright and morning star, our alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, the lover of our soul. We thank you, our kinsman redeemer. We bless your name on this morning. Now, Father, as we enter into this this time, this consecrated moment wherein we are able, God, to, 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 to gain uh, essential truths from your word. We ask that you would speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life so that the darkness will fade and the darkness will flee. We give you glory for it. Right now, we bless you for it. Have your way within this worship experience. Be glorified. Be glorified until the broken heart is mended. Be glorified until the, 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 sane gain, the insane gain their sanity. Be glorified until the, the crooked places are made straight, God. Be glorified until broken pieces are put back together again. Be glorified until the blind see and until the lame walk be glorified until those who are bound are freed right now in the presence and through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified in this place and we'll be careful to give your name all glory all honor and all praise speak Holy Ghost have your way it is in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray this to God our Father through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and we thank you in advance. If you believe it, shout amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The story is why I stayed. The story is why I stayed. We enter into this particular text at an interesting time during the ministry of Christ. He is beginning to be extremely well known. Uh, throngs of people follow him. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of people surround him after what it is that he has to give them, after what it is he has to offer. We see uh, the fame of Christ growing throughout the world. And in this season, Jesus leaves an area uh, wherein he is well known. He leaves an area uh, wherein he has done miracles. He leaves an area wherein he has had the opportunity to share the gospel. And he goes, the Bible says, to the other side. Had we began reading in the fourth chapter of the book of Mark, we would have heard about a story that many of you all are familiar with. And it is when Jesus declared that it was time to go to the other side. And, and, and the Bible says, and he got on the boat and he went to sleep. I just want to take a step back there just for a moment uh, because Jesus told his disciples we're going to the other side. And after his declaration, he got on the boat and he went to sleep. He went to sleep. And when he went to sleep, a great storm arose. And the word of the Lord declared that the storm battered the ships, that they were being tossed here and there and to and fro. Uh, 
And the disciples began to worry and they began to fret because of what they saw and because of what they felt. Uh, they began to let go of what they knew. Uh, I'm going to say it again, because of what they saw and because of what they felt, uh, they began to let go of what they knew. What do you mean, Pastor Nate? When I'm talking about what you know, I'm talking about what God has spoken in your life, what God has shared to you in your life, the anointing that God has placed over you, the favor that God has placed over you in your life. Uh, when your situation and your circumstances not necessarily match up with what you know to be true, then you have to make a decision what you will lean on. Will I lean on what I see and how I feel? or where I lean on what God said about me and my circumstance and my situation. And the first thing I want to talk to you about today is the ability to remember what he said. I, I think it's imperative leading into the text that I want to take on today, uh, just that part, remembering what he said, remembering the word that God gave you over your life, remembering the declaration that God gave you over your life, remembering the favor that God placed on your life, remembering what he said. And when you remember what he said, said, then they'll come, it'll come in, 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 in direct, uh, 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 that, that direct uh, war, war with what it is you're facing in the moment, opposition. That's the word I'm looking for, direct opposition of what it is that you're facing in the moment. Uh, when God told me, Minister Rob, I was blessed and highly favored, uh, but I seem like every time I take one step forward, I get knocked two steps back. Uh, when God told me, Chance, that uh, the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him and, 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 and that he'd make me the head and not the tail above and not beneath, but I find myself in positions where I'm having to come familiar with not having certain things and not being able to do everything I want to do. And, 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 and we realize that God allows every season in our life to come forth for a purpose and for a reason, but that does not give me the right not to remember what he said. Somebody holler, remember what he said. Remember what he said. Because if I don't remember what he said, then I could begin to believe what I see instead of what he said. Uh-oh. I'm going to say it again. If I don't remember what he said, I can begin to believe what I see over and above what he said. I, I want to encourage about 100 people this morning uh, to this end. Check that thought. I just want to encourage you. Check that thought. Uh, check that thought that told you that you were the sum of what the doctor said. Check that thought that told you that you were worth whatever was in your bank account. Check that thought that told you the abuse, abuse that you incurred over the, the, the time frame of your life was your fault. Check that thought right now that told you that you were less than and that you wouldn't be what God called you to be or told you to be or that you wouldn't have the ability to go where God already anointed you to go. Somebody holler, check that thought. Bring it into submission. Bring it into captivity. Anything right now that would exalt itself over the word of the living God in your life, I dare you to check that thought. Somebody holler, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Every now and again in our lives, we've got to do that because the situation can be so dire the situation can become so severe that I find myself running back to Jesus to make sure I heard him right wake up Jesus wake up the Bible says that Jesus is in the boat with them that he's there that he is physically in the boat with them and still they wake him they wake him because they see uh, the distress of the moment and the despair that they currently find themselves in and they shake him and they ask do you not care that we're about to perish so what is it exactly that changed your mind? What is it that caused you to forget what it is that he said? Was it really the fact that it became too difficult? That the journey became too difficult? So let me pose a question. Because the journey was difficult and extremely difficult, you made a decision that God must have changed his mind about what he called for you to be? To me, that doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense. Uh, it, it, it makes more sense to me to think of it in terms of this. Because God called me to be it and to do it and to go there, now the enemy is trying tooth and nail everything he has to oppose God's word in my life. And for that reason, it has become difficult. But although the afflictions might be many, the deliverance is always there. The word of the Lord promised as much. So then, I'm confident that whatever God started, I dare you to believe it on today, that what 
whatever God planted on the inside of me, that whatever life God called forth on the inside of me, that whatever ambition or dream he gave me, and I had the guts to go forward and start, that whatever he was God enough to start, he's God enough to finish. Come on, somebody holler, check that thought, check that thought, check that thought. Uh, I, I've, I've positioned myself now that I see more of my, of, of my dilemma and less of God's promise in my life. And, and I'm concerned because they don't seem to line up. They don't, they don't seem to line up. Jesus woke up out of his sleep and he seemed to be a little frustrated with those who were his. O ye of little faith, he declares, how long shall I be with you? The Bible says he walked, he walked to the edge of the ship and he rebuked the wind and he, he told the waves, peace be still, quiet down. Quiet down. They marveled because of what he'd done. The reality, however, is that the word he'd previously spoken was enough to get them to the other side. How many times in our life do we run back to God asking him for one more word? God, can you just give me one more? Can you tell me one more thing? Can you say one more thing? Can you help me one more way? I need you. Because really what I'm saying is the despair in my life has caused me to lose faith in what you said at first. The the hurt in my life has caused me to lose faith in what you said at first. The disappointment in my life has, has caused me to lose faith in what you said at first. The frustration in my life has caused me to lose faith in what you said at first. Somebody holler, the first word is enough. Come on, one more time. The first word, the first word is enough. So that we can get into our text. The Bible then says that after he calmed the seas, that they continued to sail on to the other side. And this is what it says. It says, and immediately when Jesus stepped off of the ship, there came a man to him. Now, Uh, This is interesting because it seems too good to be true. If you would travel with me uh, in the cinematic cortex of your mind, I just kind of want to tie the stories together. The Bible says, Chance, that this man was in the mountains and in the tombs uh, on the edge of the seashore cutting himself with stones. That would have met Chance, uh, that this man had a perfect view of the chaos that was happening that night as the storm raged over the sea of Galilee, I'm just inclined to believe that as he saw the storm continue to become more boisterous and continue to rage more fiercely, that something inside of himself related to the chaos that was happening. Have you ever been there before in your life where you can see a chaotic moment and be in the middle of a chaotic moment and even though that's not your story and that's not what you've experienced and that's not what you're going through, you can relate because I've been in trouble before. See, when you've been in trouble before, you know how to relate to people who are in trouble. Uh, When I've been in despair or distress before, I can better relate to people who are in distress or in despair now. And I'm just inclined to believe, and this is me, this is the, you won't find this in the King James Version, but I'm inclined to believe that he must have looked at the storm, Minister Gene. He must have looked at what was going on, the chaos that was raging, and in some way related to it. Related to the chaos that was happening, related uh, uh, to to, to the absolute rage that was being demonstrated through the the, the, the boisterousness of this moment. But just like that, quicker than right now and faster than in a hurry, everything that was happening there stopped. Everything that was happening there ceased. Everything that was happening there became still. And now, in this moment, The Christ who stilled the storm has stepped into the into the environment of what was raging in him. It it 
It seemed too good to be true, but it was true. The storm chaser, the the water walker, the rabble rouser, the the healer, the the redeemer, the, the blessed one. He stepped on the shore and 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 he stepped on the shore, Minister Rob, uh, for an individual who had been set aside, uh, for an individual who had been forgotten, for an individual who had been ostracized. The Bible declares that he was in the tombs, that he found his dwelling amongst the tombs in the mountains where lifeless people went to rot that he found his dwelling amongst death. So painful was this reality that the Bible declares that he began to gash himself. (laughs) It almost seems as if he did so in an effort to prove (laughs) I'm not, (laughs) I'm, I'm not where I am See, because I can still at least feel it's pain, it's turmoil, it hurts, but I can still at least feel. Have you ever been in a situation that seemed so broken that I felt like I had to prove I wasn't that? I know this is where I live and I know this is where I'm at but I'm not like the rest of them the rest of them are dead the rest of them are lifeless and I know that you guys have given up on me you've thrown in the towel on me and you've tried to chain me with chains and fetters and shackles and all types of things And but the thing that's causing uh, the war to rage on the inside of me will not allow me to be subdued by your humanity it will not allow me to be subdued by your chain nor your shackles and so I abide here and I abide in the place of death and I abide in the place of lifelessness but I'm attempting to prove to myself by cutting myself. Have you ever caused pain? Oh, I'm preaching to somebody right now. Have you ever been in a position that you hurt so bad that in order to prove that you were still alive, you did something that would cause yourself more pain just so you know, at least I'm still here. I've been there, but I've seen people do it before, Chance. I counsel people who did it before. Why would you do it? Why would you go there? I got to the point where it hurt so bad that I just engaged in the moment to prove that I was still alive. I was still here. If we read in the book of Luke, it says, Minister Rob, he was naked and bleeding with pieces of chains hanging from him, scarred, possessed, tormented, by the thing that existed within. (sighs) Mark gives us his story, chained and shackled with feathers. Luke tells us naked. Mark tells us he cut himself of stones. He dwelt amongst the tombs. This is a tragedy. This is hell on earth. How can he carry, how can he carry the distress of this moment any longer? He is being tormented, he is being bullied by the demon that lives within. And the Bible says that Jesus stepped off the boat. That, that, that amidst everything that we're talking about, amidst everything that was going on, amidst such a dire situation, such a terrible circumstance, Jesus stepped off the boat. Mm. Can I pause there to communicate to you uh, that Jesus had already caused the seas to be calm, peaceful. Somebody holler, peaceful. Peaceful. He left the peace of the seas to enter the chaos of my life. Can I say that one more time? He abandoned the peace that he had just manifested there to step into the chaos 
that existed here. I'm so glad that I serve a God who is not intimidated by my trouble, but rather a very present help in my trouble. Jesus steps off the boat and the word of the Lord declares immediately the man who is naked and bleeding and, 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 and has fetters and chains, pieces of chains hanging from him. Of the man who, who is tormented by the demons that exist inside. Immediately he runs and he falls at Jesus' feet. King James says it like this. He falls and worships him. That's what the word of the Lord declares. And so the next thing I want to talk to you about is a shift in posture. Somebody say a shift in posture. Come on, say it one more time. A shift in posture. Uh, I started to get excited about this uh, chance, and I got excited about it because of this reason chance. Uh, the man is still wrestling everything that's, that exists on the inside of him. Uh, everything that was tormenting him is still there. Nothing has changed. What has changed is the posture of the thing that was tormenting him. See, before Jesus stepped on the scene, uh, the demon was big. The demon was bad. The demon was boisterous. Before Jesus stepped on on the scene of the demon was dragging this man back and forth and to and fro and had him naked and cutting himself and living in the grave and in the tomb before Jesus stepped on the scene the demon was a big bad bully but when Jesus stepped on the scene the posture of that which was tormenting the man shifted and what I want to encourage you of this morning is when Jesus comes into your space when you enter into his presence the posture of the thing that that was tormenting you has to shift because Jesus stepped into the room. Can let me put it to you like this. When Jesus steps into the room, depression has to change its posture. When Jesus steps into the room, sickness and disease have to change their posture. When Jesus comes into my space, poverty has to change its posture. When Jesus comes into my room, every witch, every warlock, any word ever spoken against me has to change its posture. The word of the Lord declares that when Jesus steps in the room, knees begin to bow, tongues begin to confess that he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Bible says Jesus stepped off the boat. He didn't have to say nothing yet. I'm here to let you know just because he enters into my space, he hasn't even started speaking yet because he entered into my space. The posture has to change. The Bible says that the posture of the demon shifted. The thing that had been tormenting the man for so long, it, it, it changed. Jesus' presence changed everything. There's something about his presence and his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand that pleasures forevermore. There's something about his presence that changes me and, and, and changes my circumstance and transforms my situation. There's something about him just being there that causes me to be better than I was yesterday. The Bible says he's the lifter of my head. I can get up again. I can dust myself off again. I can believe that I can make it to tomorrow. I haven't come this far to give up now. There's something about when he enters into my space, being in the presence of the living God, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords changes everything. Somebody holler shift. I dare you say it like you mean it, shift. I'm trying to move on, but I believe that I'm after something right now and I think I'm going to ride it till I break it. Some of y'all been battling things too long and God told me it's time to shift. Uh, God told me it's time to shift and you've been wondering how and you've been trying to get that thing to bow down. God told me to tell you this, get in my presence. Stay in my presence. Don't move out of my presence. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to have the right words. You don't have to know the right scriptures. You don't have to. The man ain't said nothing chance. Jesus ain't said nothing either. All Jesus did was present himself. There's something about when he presents himself. If he presents himself in my situation and in the midst of my circumstance, the things that I face have no choice but to shift their posture. Somebody holler, shift. Come on, say it like you mean it. Shift. 
shift, shift. How is it that you're still standing? I imagine this man coming out the tombs, Minister Rob, and he's been screaming day and night and night and day. And for the first time in a long time, Chance, he's just running. He ain't screaming. He's just running. I imagine people would look at him. What is he running to naked? He's bleeding. And finally, he's not screaming. And they look up and this man just stepped off the boat. The man didn't say nothing. The man didn't do nothing. But the posture of the thing that was tormenting him shifted as soon as Jesus. I dare you to to recognize and realize that I'm still standing because of God's grace. I'm not crazy. I know what it is. I know it's God's mercy that I'm not consumed because his compassions refuse to fail. They were new every morning and his faithfulness is great. I'm aware of the fact that I'm still here and it's all by the grace of God. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sins break us dashing, trying to conquer my soul. Then a voice from heaven bid me still fight on. He promised never to leave me. Somebody holler, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, I know, I know, shift, dead man walking, dead man walking, I've been given up on a long time ago, dead man walking, they quit on me a long time ago, dead man walking, they ostracized me a long time ago, dead man walking, they tried to chain me, shackle me, and dead man walking, I can't even can't even clothe myself. I'm bleeding and I'm naked, dead man walking. Uh, dead man. Dead man walking. But something took place in the moment. Minister Jean, something happened. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move, but I'm stuck on the fact that Jesus hadn't said anything. That he just showed up. I'm shocked, Minister Rob. He just showed up. Chance, he didn't say nothing. Yet. He just showed up. Hmm. Then I I remembered uh, my grandfather, Chance. Thought about my grandfather. Uh, My grandfather... He had gotten sick on one occasion, and he had a blood clot. The doctor said that the blood clot was going to kill him. There wasn't any way around it. Their exact quote was, he was a ticking time bomb. And sooner or later, this clot was going to break off and go to his heart or his lungs, and that would be it. I was in college in Huntington, West Virginia, Chance, about seven hours away. And... My parents called and told me, and I got in my friend's car. I didn't have a car at the time. My friend let me use his car. I got in my friend's car, and I headed home. I didn't stop unless I had to stop for gas. They said he was a time bomb. I was going to get here in time, chance. But I believed God, and I knew I had a praying grandmother. I kind of felt like singing that, but I'm not going to go there. I I knew I had a praying grandmother chance. And and I'd been told that my grandmother said my grandfather was coming home with her. So the more they told me that, the more I began to ease up off off the gas pedal just a little. Long story short, chance I got to the hospital just in time, just in time, just in time. Just in time to see my grandfather sitting up on the edge of the bed, putting his clothes back on because the clock that they said he had had disappeared, wasn't there anymore. And I walked in the room, Minister Rob, and I never forget my grandfather looked over his shoulder and his eyes began to well up with tears. And this is what he told me, Minister Rob. He said, you came all this way for me. I looked at him, and I'm just excited at this point that I see he's better and he's about to go home. And I just shook my head, yes, and tears began to fall from his face. And he said, you came 
all this way for me. Chance, I, I, I battled with what would shift the posture of, 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 of the thing that, that the man in gathering was, was wrestling uh, until I took a look uh, at, at, at second Corinthians in the fifth chapter and it said the love of Christ constraineth us. Come on somebody help me. Of the love of Christ grabs a hold of us. Of the love of Christ snatches us up. The love of Christ ties us up together and it it ties us up. It says because we thus judge that if one man died for all then all were dead and that he died that they which live would not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again and then it goes on to say therefore if any man be in Christ. If any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new, but it all began with the love of Christ constraining us. And I realized that sometimes just showing up is love enough. I don't have to have the right words to say. I don't have to do anything just yet. My presence here, just letting you know that I came all the way across the sea, that I went through storms and and, and I went through trials tribulation in order to get to you when I show up it demonstrates to you all you need to know about what I think about you and so when Jesus stepped off the boat that communicated in that moment to the man who was possessed with the demons that this love is different somebody holler he showed up come on say it one more time like you mean it he showed up he showed up when, for me when, when my friends turned their back chance. He showed up for me when, 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 when family couldn't do nothing to help me. He, he showed up for me and the love of Christ constrained me. The love of Christ grabbed a hold of me. The love of Christ refused to let me go. Huh. And Jesus began to speak. Huh? What is your name? He asked. The spirit that tormented the man spoke and said, Legion, for we are many. Allow me just a few moments to explain to you what he was saying there. A Roman legion chances 6,000 men. 6,000. Jesus asked the demon, what is your name? He said, legion, for we are many. So then, this man was possessed by thousands of demons. Thousands of demons. And and they fell all together at Jesus' feet. What have we to do with thee, they asked that you would come here to torment us. Isn't it funny how, how you, the demons who are tormenting the man get mad with Jesus because they think he coming to torment them? <laughs> what are you here for? Why, why would you come all the way over here to torment us? We, we didn't come where you were. Watch this. We knew where you were supposed to be. That's why we didn't come there. I want to pause for a moment and thank God for not only staying in the places where people thought he was supposed to be. (laughs) I want to thank God for being God enough to go into the crack house. I want to thank God for being God enough to go into the whorehouse. I want to thank God for being God enough to have a a conversation on the corner in the middle of a drug deal that could save somebody's soul and transform their whole life. I want to thank God for being God enough uh, to save somebody while they was on the stripper pole. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I want to thank God for being God enough to transform the situation and to go places where people didn't think he had no business going. The demons began to speak, what are you doing here? We didn't come to the other side. That's why, that's why uh, we, we didn't come because we knew you were over there. Why did you come over here? And Jesus demonstrates I'm not limited to where you think I should be. And I'm, I'm about to send you a message. The Bible says that he tells the demon, come out now. Come out now. Somebody holler freedom. Uh, He tells tells the demon to come out now. And and all at once, we began began to see the purpose chance for his arrival. 
tells the demon to come out and the demon begins to try to negotiate. <laughs> Y'all ever seen the enemy try to negotiate? Man, look, man, I know I can't have all of you, but just let me have this part. Just let me be prevalent in this part. Just let me influence this part. The Bible says he tried to negotiate. He says, listen, we've spent too much time uh, existing in this area. And, and, and we've already made some strides here. So, so don't send us away from the area. It, 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 at least allow us to remain in the area. You can send us into the swine and to the pigs. Jesus suffered it to be so, the Bible said, and 2,000 pigs. They entered 2,000 pigs, and 2,000 pigs ran off, off the cliff into the seashore. Because 2,000 pigs were not able to take what one man had dealt with for quite some time. Uh, I want to let you know this morning that there, that there was a role in the storm, that there was a goal of the storm. I want to change your perspective of the storm. Listen, Jesus spoke this word, Chance, and he said, we're going to the other side. And then the Bible says he slept. And it says they got into their journey and the storm came and their boat was being filled with water. The effort, the attempt of the storm was to kill them. But Jesus had already spoken. And the storm raged, Minister Rob, and, and the storm beat up the ships, and, and the storm did everything it could to prohibit them from reaching their destiny. The storm did everything it could to stop them from getting where God said they were supposed to go. And I want to let you know this morning uh, that the storm is after the word of God in your life. That, that the storm is after your purpose, that the storm is after your impact, that the storm is after what it is that God has called for you to be, that the storm did not just show up uh, coincidentally or because of happens. The storm has a purpose attached to it, that the storm came in order to try to stop you from proceeding into what it is that God has called for you to be and to do in your life, that there is a role for the storm and there is a goal for the storm and there is a purpose for the storm but there is a God who is greater than the storm and there is a God who says my word will not return unto me void but it will accomplish that whereunto I sent it if I said we're going to the other side regardless of the storm if it keeps on raging in my life your soul will still be anchored in the Lord and I'll still get you to where it is I promised you you were going somebody said I'm still going I'm still going I'm still going it's not been easy but I'm still going. I've had to cry along the way, but I'm still going. I've been broken, but I'm still growing. I've lost some people along the way, but I'm still going. I'm determined to be what it is that God called for me to be. I'm determined to do what it is what God called for me to do. And no witch, no warlock, no storm, no devil in hell, nothing that comes against me will stop me from being what it is that God called for me to be. Somebody holler, I'm still pushing. I'm still pushing. I'm still pushing. Jesus says we're going to the other side uh, the storm comes and there's a purpose for the storm there's a role for the storm there's a goal for the storm Minister Robin I want to submit to you this morning that the role of the storm was attempt to keep Jesus in his place uh, I'm going to say it again. The role of the storm was a feeble attempt to keep Jesus in his place. The storm that comes into your life and rages in your life is an attempt to keep you in your place. Impact what you were supposed to impact. Don't be coming over here with all that extra stuff. I left you alone while you were over there. Now don't be coming over here. The storm was an attempt to keep Jesus on his side chance, on his side of the Sea of Galilee, because sometimes 
sometimes people don't think if I'm not from that culture, if I'm not from that class, if I'm not from that race, I can't come to your side and be efficient and be effective doing what God called for me to do. The issue was this chance that that over there was Jewish territory. But when you came to the gathering, when you came to Gennesaret or the Decapolis, now you're talking about Gentile territory. Now you're talking about stuff that Jesus ain't supposed to be involved with. You a Jew, stay a Jew, be a Jew. Don't come over here trying to cause change in something that you don't know nothing about. And Jesus said, I've not only come for the Jew, but I've also come for the Gentile. I've not only come for man, but I've also come for woman. Listen, Jesus says, I'm stepping over boundaries. I'm knocking down walls. I'm getting where it is I'm supposed to go. And you can't stop me, devil. I dare you to holler, you can't stop me. You've got to understand why the storm is raging the way that it is. It was, it was Gentile territory that he was coming into. And, 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 and Jesus comes all the way uh, to Gentile territory. Uh, Jesus comes all the way to, to Gennesaret. And, and here we see him participate and the cleansing of the man who had been tormented by the legion of demons. Uh, this, this was the first time Jesus went to Gentile territory and Gentile property and ministered to Gentile people and shook things up so much so that the Bible says, after the swine were all cast into the sea, that behold, the, the people who were keeping the pigs ran into the city. Minister Robin, they told everybody and, and, and Gennesaret what had taken place. And, and they came back and they saw the man. Now watch this. Uh, when Jesus steps onto the scene, he changes everything about my life. I was tormented, I was naked, I was bleeding, and I had gone crazy. They find the man seated in a place of peace, clothed. The Bible declares that he was in his right mind. And they looked at the man, and then they looked at what his deliverance cost them, and they asked Jesus to leave. The Bible says that he turned. Now, he didn't debate. He didn't fight with them. Can I let you know that too this morning? When Jesus begins to shift things in your life in such a way that it costs you something, but you're able to come closer to him. If you count the cost and ask him to leave, He's not going to fight it. He's not going to wrestle you in your opinion. The Bible says Jesus turned around and stepped back on the same boat he had stepped off of. And this is the thing. And this is our text. The man who had once been tormented and possessed, he ran over to Jesus. And he begged him, take me with you. Take me with you. I want to go wherever you go. I want to be wherever you are. And Jesus told him this. Go home to your friends. Share your story. Tell your story throughout the Decapolis. That is the reason that I'm calling you to stay. And we realize in the moment that the man who was once tormented, that his suffering was a seed. That the story that Mark told us, 
He was naked. He was bleeding. He was tormented. He was shackled and chains couldn't hold him in fetters and people had tried to tie him up and chain him and tame him and nobody could tame him and he was bleeding and naked and all of these things. He was crazy. He was screaming day and night and night and day and he had no rest and he was among tombs and mountains and he's tormented continually that this entire story of suffering was a sea. Because what communicated to people how great Jesus was, was being able to know how dire his situation was. The fact that Jesus stepped in to chaos and turmoil and changed everything and although he asked, he was refused. The story is why I stayed. Because there is something about the testimony of those who have overcome because there is something about people who have endured and there is something about individuals who have been tried by fire and have come out on the other side as pure gold. The story is, 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 is why I stayed. Uh, the man, I don't know, I want to be transparent and I want to be real with you guys. If it were me, I probably would have tried to catch another boat back to the other side and just follow Jesus at a distance. But knowing what he had spoken to me, Chance, in regards to my story and what it is I was supposed to be doing. I had a purpose there in the Decapolis. See, Jesus hadn't been to that area, and, and, and when he healed the man, he went throughout the entire 10 cities and began to share the story of his brief engagement with Jesus, whom they had called the Christ. And and his story began to plant a seed in an area where Jesus was not supposed to be for a season and a time where Jesus would change everything and present himself as a sacrifice to the entire world. The story is why I stayed. Some of us here today, we face countless difficulties in our lives. We've gone through hills and valleys. I've heard your concerns. Why me? Why me, Pastor Nate? Why, why me? Why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to feel this way? Why do I have to experience this type of heartbreak? Why do I have to? I'm right on the verge of losing my entire mind. Why me? Jesus told me to encourage you this morning. What you're carrying, you were never intended to carry alone. I've crossed raging seas, storms. Let me put it like this. I stepped over death, hell, in the grave so that I could come to your side so that I could present my presence before you and cause everything that hindered you everything that tormented you to shift its posture uh, I came for you I came for you and you may be wondering so are you saying that this is the moment that everything will change? By God's grace, I believe that this is the moment that everything will change. If you would but fall down at his feet and allow God to be God in this moment. The story, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus the Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation that he came so that the blind would receive sight so that he came so that the lame would walk so that he came so that those who were bound would go free so that he came so that the stranger would be welcomed in that he came to declare the acceptable year of the Lord that he came for me that he came for me
I want to let you know today, no matter what it is that you're facing, that Jesus is here and he has come. He's come for you. And you wrestled with your story and you didn't understand why. And I want to let you know that there's power in your story. There's authority in your story. Lives are going to be changed because of your story. People are going to hope again because of your story. People are going to dream again because of your story. People are going to get back up again because of your story. People are going to dust themselves off because of your story. People are going to wipe their tears away because of your story. People are going to be be able to gain the hope and the encouragement needed to wake back up tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And And it'll have nothing to do with what they're seeing in their life. But every thing to do with what God did in and through your life. Your story is for a reason. The story, the story is why he stayed. I wanted to leave. I wanted to get out of Gennesaret. I didn't want to be around those people anymore. After they saw what Jesus did for me and they still asked him to leave, I didn't want anything else to do with them. And Jesus said, that's precisely why I need you to stay because they needed to be reminded every single day of how I healed you. They need to be reminded every single day of how I restored you. They need to be reminded every single day. Of, don't you, I, I want you to realize that this is not a, a simple irony that's taking place, that every day he was tormented and Jesus said, stay every day and show him how I freed you. Stay every day and let them see how I set you free. The story that Jesus would travel from the opposite side of the Sea of Galilee to Gennesaret for a demon-possessed Gentile who was cutting himself in tombs. Sounds a lot to me like how he would travel through 42 generations. How he would be planted in the womb of a woman called Mary. How he would step from eternity down into time. How he would strategically position himself to become my kinsman redeemer. How he would cause the enemy and the imps that thought they had humanity bound to shift their posture and declaration that he is Lord of all. And the story, what kept me, what sustained me, Minister Rob, what gave me the the ability to hope again and to press toward the prize of the mark of the high calling, the story is why I stayed. Right now, if you're here this morning and You seek that presence I was talking about. You want want more of it. You want more of it. You want more of it. You want to accept him now. You don't want to wait. You don't have to wait right now if you repeat after me. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ. Come on, the son of the living God. Come on, I believe that you died for me. And rose again on day number three. Forgive me of all of my sins. Come on, right now, I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I am saved. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me, just hashtag, that's me. Hashtag, that's me right now. We have ministers right now connected to this line. They want to pray with you. They, they, they want to speak into you. Uh, they want to welcome you into the family of the living God. If, if you're looking for a place to call home, I don't care where you are. If God spoke to you during this worship experience and said, this is the place for you. I don't care if you're on the East Coast or West Coast. I don't care if you're up north or down south. I don't care if you're on this continent or not. If God spoke to you and told you this is the place for you, I want to welcome you home right now don't wait any longer come on come on God's going to utilize connection God, God's going to utilize a kingdom connection in order to assist you in telling your story come on come on come on right now if that's you I want you just to hashtag that's me that's me come on we want to welcome you home we want to welcome you home we've got prayer warriors right now we've got first responders right now on the line they want to welcome you in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah 
My story is not your story. And, and your story is not my story. But our story is for God's glory. For God's glory. He's going to be magnified in you. He's going to be lifted up through you. You just got to be available. Come on, somebody say, Lord, I'm available. Come on, come on, say it one more time. Put your hand on your heart. Put your hand in your heart and really tap it and just tell them, Lord, I'm available. Lord, I'm available. Come on, say it. My storage is empty. I am available to you. I'm available. Come on, come on. My storage is empty. I am available. My storage empty. I am available to you. Father, we give you glory for this worship experience. We thank you for our time together. Now, God, allow this word to go forth and bring forth good fruit and let that fruit remain. As we depart from this place, but not from your presence, allow no evil to befall us. Neither let any plague come near our tent. Thank you, great God, that you are forgiven your angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Tis in the name of Jesus the Christ that we pray this of God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in advance. If you believe it, shout amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. There's glory in your story. I love you. God bless you.